students, I am Tulika Banerjee. Today, I bring you a learning module in BSc Forensic Science on behalf of the content writers Dr. G. S. Sodi and myself on an important unit of Forensic Ballistics which is Ammunitions Part 1 in which we will discuss about modern day ammunitions and its development, various types of ammunition and components of cartridge and its characteristics. We will wind up this module with the discussion on head stamp markings used on ammunitions. Let us start our module with a look at what we are going to learn today. Dear students, let us start our module with a brief introduction. According to section 2, subsection 1 of Indian Arms Act of 1959, Ammunition means any artillery that can be used in combat or warfare. It includes rockets, bombs, grenades and other live missiles, articles, designs for torpedo surface and submarine mining, other articles containing or designed or adopted to contain explosive, fulminating or fissionable material or noxious liquid, gas, etc. Charges of firearms and accessories for such charges, fuses and friction tubes, parts of and machinery for manufacturing ammunition. Ammunitions are used in different ways for different types of firearms. In general, ammunition means cartridges composed of shells, propellants, primer and projectile commonly used in firearms. A single cartridge is known as round. Due to the development of wrapped powder ball, the word cartridge came into existence. In case of a smooth bore firearm, the mass of a small round lead projectiles is referred to as short or charge or the load, while the individual round projectile is termed as pellet. Let us have a brief review on the history of ammunitions. So far India is concerned, a stanza appears in Atharva Rahasya about the existence of a mixture consisting of charcoal, sulphur and other materials providing fire powder. This is testimony to the fact that Indians were familiar with gunpowder even in ancient times. Indians used gunpowder much before the Chinese as was reported by the Hindustan Times dated October 7, 1980 by Press Trust of India. Sikranati, a work contemporaneous with Manusmriti, which is assigned by many scholars as a work of 2nd century BC, prescribes guns and projectiles as the standard equipment of a king's war chariot. Vaishampayan, who is credited with the authorship of Yadurveda, also wrote Niti Shastra which describes an account of a smoke balls containing gunpowder in the weapons to be used against the enemy. Opuk G mentions that gunpowder is known in Sanskrit literature as Agni Churm or fire powder and the expression Nalika in the text refers to the guns made out of bamboo pipes in ancient India. China invented gunpowder and firearms in the 9th century and 14th century respectively. These inventions were later transmitted to the Middle East and Europe. The cartridge has always been designed according to the firearm used whether it is muzzle loading or breech loading firearm. Earlier brass containers which contained powder were used. Their size was slightly smaller than the barrel. Brass container had bullet on its top. Later with new advancements, primer was developed. 
breech loading rifles were made with firing pins which would strike primer and ignite the cartridge leading to propulsion of the bullet. With time, bullet designs have evolved according to the need and improvisation of the firearm. Till date, the bullets are composed of lead but this might change as it is toxic in nature. Jacketing of bullets was first started in 1882 by Major Edward Rubin. Copper jacket was first used for the bullet which decreased friction on the bullet when it left the barrel. This concept of jacketing bullets is still prevalent. Now let us have a look at the classification of ammunition. In general, a cartridge is a complete arrangement of rounds of ammunition consisting of cartridge case, primer, propellant, projectile, bullets in case of rifled firearm and pellets in case of a smoothbore firearm, wads in case of a smoothbore firearm. Ammunition can be classified into two categories and they are metallic ammunition and shotgun ammunition. Components of metallic cartridges are metallic cartridge case, it can be shell or empty, percussion cap or primer, propellant or gunpowder and the bullet. Shotgun cartridges have the components such as paper cartridge case, it can be shell or empty, percussion cap or primer, propellant or gunpowder, spherical ball or lead pellets, overshot wad, undershot wad, air cushion wad and over powder wad. Now students, let us move on to the components of a cartridge. Starting with the very first component, we have the cartridge case. A cartridge case is also known as an empty shell. It provides housing for various components of the cartridge. It is usually made up of brass for rifle, pistol and revolver ammunition. In case of shotgun, cartridge case is made from several layers of paper which are tightly compressed. The base of this paper shell is made up of brass. Plastic shells for shotgun are also being manufactured now. Those cartridge cases which are meant for high velocity weapons are long and bottlenecked. The base of the cartridge case may be rimmed or rimless. Rimless cartridge is used in semi-automatic and automatic firearms. Cartridge case can be classified on the basis of two characteristics. First one is on the basis of case body. On the basis of case body of the cartridge case, it is classified as straight body cartridge case, tapered body cartridge case and bottleneck cartridge case. Let us discuss them one by one. First is the straight body cartridge case. In this type, the diameter of cartridge case body is same all along the length of the cartridge case and is further divided into long cartridge case and short cartridge case. Long cartridge case is commonly used in shotgun whereas short cartridge case is used in revolvers or pistols. Next is tapered body cartridge case. In tapered body cartridge case, the diameter of the case body goes on decreasing all along the length of the cartridge case and from the rim to the mouth and they are commonly used in rifles. Third one is the bottleneck cartridge case. In this type, the diameter of the case body is same throughout the length of the cartridge case except that little tapering is present near the mouth of the cartridge case. The second classification of the cartridge case is based on the basis of head. On the basis of head of the cartridge case, it has been divided into five categories. First is rimmed cartridge case. This type of cartridge case is also known as flanged cartridge. 
It is the oldest type of cartridge case and has a rim which has a larger diameter as compared to the base of the cartridge case. Rimmed cartridge case helps in positioning of cartridge correctly in chamber and facilitates extraction. This positioning of cartridge in the chamber of the firearm at appropriate depth in the chamber is known as head spacing. On some type of rimmed cartridges, rim is also used to hold the priming compound. The second one is the rimless cartridge case. In this type of cartridge case, the diameter of rim and base of case is exactly the same. The break formed in between the body of the cartridge and that of the rim is called as the extractor groove, as it forms a lip which can be clenched by the extractor to remove the empty cartridge case after firing. Semi-rimmed cartridge case. In this type of case, rim is projected slightly beyond the base of the cartridge case, but not as much as rimmed cartridge case. The small size does not interfere much in feeding from box magazine and provides enough head spacing surfaces. These types of cases are less popular as compared to others. The fourth type is the rebated rim cartridge case. In these types of cartridge cases, the diameter of rim is considerably small as compared to that of the base of the cartridge case. It only helps in extraction. It has same function as rimless case but has some more advantages when considered in combination with other types of cartridges. And the fifth one is the belted cartridge case. The belt present on belted cases are also known as belted magnums and is present to provide head spacing. Belt is made by cutting the extractor group. This belt acts like a rim for a rimless case. Next we will be talking about primers. The primer composition has the following basic ingredients. First one is an initiator which is a sensitive high explosive, a fuel, an oxidizer and a stabilizer. The sensitive high explosive which functions as an initiator is a pressure sensitive material which gives out a flame to ignite combustible materials which works as a fuel. An oxygen supplier would supply necessary oxygen so that combustion of fuel is proper. A friction causing material is also mixed so as to carry out the functioning of the entire exercise in a satisfactory manner. In 18 107, a Scottish clergyman, James Forsyth, discovered a shock sensitive explosive called as mercury fulminate, that is H-G-O-N-C whole twice. This type of explosive will detonate if it is struck by or by shock. A spark will also be generated by the detonation process. By 1850, cartridges which were being manufactured contained mul I repeat, by 1850, cartridges which were being manufactured contained mercury fulminate inside the rim of the cartridge case. The development of the cap composition has been a fascinating and dangerous adventure. It was one of the most important steps in the development of firearms. It gave a final blow to the match lock, flint lock and wheel lock mechanisms. These were the muzzle loading mechanisms. It also gave an all weather cartridge. The composition of mercury fulminate primer weight has been like this. Mercury fulminate 8 parts, potassium chlorate 14 parts, antimony sulphide 18 parts, sulphur or glass one part and gunpowder one part. However, mercury fulminate as primer suffers from a number of drawbacks. Mercury fulminate gives mercury on ignition. 
it makes the brass cases brittle and consequently unfit for frequent use. Barrels get deteriorated quickly because of the deposition of mercury on their surface. Potassium chlorate when ignited produces potassium chloride which is hygroscopic in nature meaning it readily absorbs moisture resulting on early rusting of barrels. Powder glass particles if used will abrade the barrel resulting in the increase of bore diameter. In view of the already mentioned defects, the new primer compositions have come up by replacing mercury fulminate which was earlier used. In our country, the new primer composition which is being used today is lead stephanate 30 to 40 percent, antimony sulphide 13 to 17 percent, barium nitrate 27 to 37 percent. PETN 4 to 6 percent, tetracine 3 to 5 percent and aluminum 6 to 8 percent. In military ammunition, mercury fulminate as the main ingredient has been replaced by estefanate in most of the countries. The two important points with regard to primer which are needed to be kept in mind are the primer compositions mentioned or that I have already told you are used in all systems of ignition namely in rim fire, pin fire and center fire cartridges. When the gunshot residue is analyzed from the hands of a shooter, the examiner should look for particles of antimony, lead and barium from the primer composition itself. Next we will be talking about the propellants. The term propellant means an agent which fires the projectiles out from a firearm. In order to propel a bullet or shotgun charge or a pellet through the barrel a certain amount of force is necessary. The powder charge gets ignited through primer and converts it into gas very quickly thereby resulting in development of high pressure in the cartridge and forcing the bullet to get out of the barrel finally. The various types of propellants that are used are gunpowder or black powder, smokeless powder, semi smokeless powder, triple base powder and RDX based propellant. We will take each one of them one by one. First is the gunpowder. Gunpowder is the oldest recorded propellant. It was used for giving signals and fireworks. The gunpowder consists of potassium nitrate, sulphur and charcoal roughly in the proportion of 75 is to 15 is to 10. The powder is not suitable for high velocity ammunition as large amounts of powder are required for getting high velocities for the projectiles. The powder leaves a considerable amount of solid residue which tends to foul the barrel. It remains fairly stable if kept dry over prolonged period. It is glazed and polished to increase its storing or keeping qualities. Gunpowder causes much smoke and fouling of the target. It is mostly used in muzzle loading and blank cartridges. The powder is available with different grain sizes having mesh limit of 6 to 10 to 46 to 60. Next is smokeless powders. The modern high velocity era started with the use of smokeless powders. The basic constituents of the smokeless powders are nitroglycerin and nitrocellulose that is gun cotton. Nitrocellulose is either used alone or in combination with nitroglycerin to form propellants. The latter being called as double base powders while the former is known as single base powder. Some of the double base powders that are commonly used contains nitroglycerin. Combination of nitroglycerin, nitrocellulose and mineral jelly are also known as cordite, modified cordite and ballastite. 
the composition of common double base powders are if it is cordite it has 58 percent of nitroglycerin 37 percent of nitrocellulose and 5 percent of mineral jelly in case of modified cordite it has 30 percent of nitroglycerin 65 percent of nitrocellulose and 5 percent mineral jelly in case of ballastite it has equal quantities of nitroglycerin and nitrocellulose without any mineral jelly smokeless powders degrade with time however the lifespan of such powder has been increased tremendously by improved technology and by addition of stabilizers it is important to note that smokeless powders do not explode inside a cartridge instead they combust since the combustion is occurring in a closed space it can have the force of an explosion the third type is the semi smokeless powder semi smokeless powder is mixture of black powder and nitrocellulose the approximate composition of the powder are nitrated with cellulose in the percentage of 20 potassium nitrate 60 percent carbon 12 percent sulfur 8 percent the powder produces less smoke than gunpowder but mixing process is quite dangerous this aspect has prevented its extensive production and use the fourth type is the triple base powder the triple base powder contains the ingredients such as nitroglycerin nitrocellulose and black powders the percentages of the various constituents vary but do not offer any special advantage hence they are seldom used the fifth one is the rdx based propellant a new propellant is which the active ingredient is from the family of cyclotriamethylene triamine or rdx has come up it is being utilized in the manufacture of cartridges by controlling not only the shattering nature of the high explosive but also its heat production the advantages are obvious the rate of fire can be increased without detrimental effect on the weapon firing the ammunition however its composition and other details are not available presently an ideal powder should have the features of that it should be stable on storage it should not be corrosive in nature it should produce minimum amount of smoke it should produce minimum amount of heat for a given velocity it should be homogeneous that is same amount of the powder should give same velocities it is mainly to improve these qualities that most of the research on propellants is being done in addition reduction of production cost and increase in safety margins are other important considerations consequently new propellants are always lined up in the market next we will be discussing about wads in shotgun ammunition usually there are four types of wads which are present over powder wad cushion wad undershot wad and overshot wad they keep the charges and the cartridge in their proper places in addition the cushion wads seal the barrel on firing and thus prevent escape of gases and consequent loss of velocity they also clean and lubricate the barrels over powder undershot and overshot wads are made of spherical quality cardboards varying in thickness from about 2 to 3.5 millimeters they are waterproof they are slightly larger than the bore of the firearm for which they are intended air cushion wads are made from felt cork felting that is shredded paper and from plastics with air holes they seal the barrel properly and prevent escape of gases 
The cushion wads are about 12.5 millimeters in thickness and are often greased. The grease lubricates the barrels. The modern shotgun wadding has undergone several changes in the last few decades. The changes that have been made are the base wad is plastic mold and fixed to the base of the brass head under pressure. The over powder wad has changed to an inverted cup wad open side towards and over the powder so that when gases are formed the lip the open round edge of the cup is pressed with pressure against the barrel and thus it seals the bore. It prevents the escape of gases from the sides. The function of air cushion wads is carried out by the cup wad and piston which is attached to the rectangular projectile sleeve containing and protecting the projectiles from coming in contact with the barrel and consequently damaging them. The sleeve has cuts along the edges in its frontal part. The four sides of the sleeve open up and fan out along the cuts when the sleeve comes out of the muscle. The sleeve gets separated from the projectile charge. The sleeve being lighter falls down. It does not interfere with the shots in their flights. The buckshot in a cartridge has spaces which are filled with granular plastic material to cushion them. The plastic granular material prevents damage and provides uniform push to the projectiles. They ensure proper push to the projectiles, gives better spread and uniform velocities to the buckshots. These innovations have improved the aim, range and ballistics of the shotgun cartridge considerably. Next, we will be talking about bullets. The traditional bullet is made up of soft metal with a rounded nose. The metal used is lead but varying amounts of antimony is added to it in order to provide hardness. This type of bullet is known as round nosed soft bullet and is commonly used in small arms. Rifle bullets are arced and streamlined. There are some variations. A square nosed soft metal bullet known as wad cutter and are used mainly for target shooting. Hollow point variety has a depression in the nose of the soft metal. This bullet is designed to expand or mushroom on impact. The bullets are covered with a jacket to overcome shredding of lead and jacketed bullets are of two types. One is full metal jacket bullets, those bullets which are covered with a strong jacket. The jacket covers the complete bullet except the base where soft metal interior is exposed. These types of bullets are made for military purpose. This jacket can be made up of steel, copper, nickel and zinc. Second category is semi jacketed bullets which are covered with comparatively thin jacket and the nose is partially or fully exposed. These types of bullets are mainly designed for creating mushrooming effect on impact. Apart from these basic bullets or their types, some specific types of bullets are dum dum bullets. These bullets were first developed in India in 1980s at dum dum arsenal and were so named after the place dum dum in Kolkata. They were earlier used in 1898 but had some defects. Since the base of the bullet was not jacketed, there was a possibility that the core will blow and leave the jacket in the rifling of the barrel which may hinder the loading of next round. Second is explosive bullets. These types of bullets are highly dangerous as they cause serious injuries to victim and they even pose danger for surgeons or 
doctors conducting postmortems as these bullets might get exploded while autopsy or might detonate during diagnostic procedures such as ultrasonography then we have frangible bullets these bullets are made from compressed particles of paint and metal these types of bullets are used as training bullet for aerial gunners by us army on impacting the object these bullets disintegrate into dust like particles causing no damage to the object next is baton round these are also known as rubber bullets it is a right control projectile they were first developed in hong kong and were made from wood but later these wood bullets were modified into rubber bullets next is armor piercing bullets this type of bullet is made for military purpose to pierce light steel armor the core of the bullet is made up of steel and surrounded by lead sleeve both the core and the sleeves are covered under an outer jacket on impact the jacket and sleeve remain outside the armor whereas the core pieces the armor it is mainly used against light armored vehicles next is tracer bullet these bullets leave a visible mark while in flight which helps in tracing the path of the bullet they look like a ball but the rear portion of the core is removed and the empty space is filled with a mixture of barium nitrate and powdered magnesium along with strontium nitrate to add red color to it a flash of propellant ignites this chemical mixture the mixture burns and shreds red spark during its flight Next dear students we will be talking about head stamp markings The identification of cartridge is one of the most important aspects of forensic ballistics Identification of cartridge can be done by looking at the head stamp It is not a foolproof method but is the earliest method of identification A stamped marking on the head of the cartridge is also known as head stamp the information retrieved from these head stamps can be varied and depend on the use and manufacturing of the cartridge more than one information can be obtained pertaining to the elements in cartridge those cartridges which are made for sporting or civilians usually have two elements one of the elements is used to identify a specific chambering and another to identify manufacturer on the other hand cartridges made for military purpose can have all or some of these elements date and place of manufacture and other identification marks this figure shows the head stamp styles earlier cartridges used to have head stamps which were segmented but these types of head stamps were discontinued after world war 1 clock face orientation is used to indicate the location of elements and some of the examples of head stamp markings has been shown in the figure now dear students i hope you have really enjoyed this modules and let us have a brief look at the conclusion of this module ammunitions are used in different ways for different types of firearms in general ammunition means cartridges composed of shells propellants primer and projectile commonly used in firearms The classification for cartridge cases is based on two types one on the type of case body and the other based on the type of head of cartridge case there are various types of propellants and primers which are being used today 
different types of firearms use different types of bullets. In addition to this, the head stamp portion of the cartridge case also comprise of various markings. The information retrieved from these head stamps can be varied and depend on the use and manufacturing of the cartridge.